Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be with you. It, what an incredible event. Um, it's great to be part of something that uh, would have been rather unusual five years ago, um, unthinkable a decade ago. Um, but we are in a time of thinking the unthinkable, of radically changing how and what we teach and with whom we teach and learn. We need to reconsider the epistemology of fashion. It's the consequence of our habits of thought based on ideas of modernity, industrialization, globalization, power, progress, dominance, and related habits of dress that we are living out here and now in a threefold health crisis <clears throat> at planetary, personal, and societal levels. The Chinese symbol for crisis is formed of two elements, danger and opportunity. I actually first came across this symbol uh, in the work of Michael Schellenberger and Ted Nordhaus in their work on the death of environmentalism. It was one of the provocations for me in setting up Center for Sustainable Fashion in, in 2007. And since then, uh, we're very proud of our graduates. We're proud of the impacts of our research, of our policy advocacy, and hugely respectful of the work of so many incredible people, um, very many people here today. Um, and this is amazing, and we have seen huge change. However, we are all still outsized by a fetishization of innovation, ideas of novelty, growth, reinvention as the means for progress and markers of success. It is stifling creativity and diminishing our lives. For fashion educators, we have an opportunity and necessity to teach and learn a deep and lived understanding of our interdependencies with each other in nature. It is our only source of prosperity as social beings. Our errors in habits of thought are made starkly explicit in our anthropocentric behavior and through social constructs that facilitate exploitation and powerlessness. This extends way beyond fashion education, but as a set of principles, relationships, practices, values, and ideas about ourselves and each other, mediated by materials and processes, engaged in by all clad humans, our habits of dress, which themselves in themselves threaten us, hold the potential, I believe, to change and be changed by our habits of thought. We sit in a tension, all of us as, as tutors, between a responsibility in preparing learners for employment, for fulfilling work within a one to three year, maybe time span, depending on course length, in a system that puts designers to work as pushers of perceived need, promoters of individualism as a means to stimulate consumption. Students have curiosity and need for work. And we have to understand also our duty of care to nurture creatives who have the agency and resilience to thrive. Whilst there's increasing evidence that graduates with an ecological understanding are really starting to make their way it is still easier to learn outmoded understandings of fashion. It is still easier to be recognized if your practices harm. So what do we do? Well, when in danger, we, we either storm in, garbed in protective clothing, the intention to survive against the odds, against the opponent, the other, or we hide, decked in camouflage, intending to survive the storm, convincing ourselves it's not really real, we've survived in the past, we think what we've built is stormproof. Or we imagine ourselves differently. We look down at what we're wearing and think about ourselves as part of this danger and change ourselves to thrive in it, with it. But the direction that we take depends on our perception of what is going on and our intentions, what we value. Crisis draws on our root beliefs. It shapes our hopes and ideas. It helps us to show our true colors. And universities are great places of reflection and action. So it's up to us to be condition creators, to hold the space, to engage in these really tricky tensions of our times, but to engage in them through pedagogies of hope and to explore habits of dress and habits of mind through our pedagogic approaches. It's not up to us to tell students which way to go, 
but to foster resilience to take considered decisions. Fashion education involves many different elements. Four key elements, as Sterling shows in his work, are vocational. We all know about that, creating the skills and capabilities for work. Socialization, enabling learners to learn and explore their identities and their contribution in the world. Disciplinary, expanding knowledge and practice relating to a field of study, but also transformational. This relates to perception and consciousness. This, I would argue, is what shapes how we explore and approach the others. This is true particularly now as a vocational aspect of education, whilst vital, it is pushing towards business need. And this is reducing creativity and sustainability to problem minimizing, risk management, simplification, a focus on symptoms rather than causes. If we're to realize the potential of fashion education, we need to move from existence minimum to a more expansive quality maximum to reference Manzini's work. Design is the activity that takes a situation and shifts it into another realm. But a real shift in products, services, systems, and mindsets necessitates an understanding of our interbeing, to reference Thich Nhat Hanh. Ai Weiwei's quote here, I think, is a call to action for all of us. There's no beauty, no aesthetic judgment that is not related to morals and how we look at the world. Our role as tutors is to create the conditions for transformation. And so I want to take the next few minutes, I know I'm almost running out, is to draw on um, the work that I'm doing around transformation design. I've looked at literature from across different disciplines to be able to consider three important dimensions of transformation. Each of them are important and each of them have to work together. The first is about awareness, how we teach about sustainability to identify problems, recognize them, care for those affected, to gather evidence of the situation. This in itself can save lives and species. It can be recognized for its value, but it's not enough on its own. We also need to consider ideation, teaching for sustainability, creating the conditions for where new materials, products and services that factor in elements of the cost to nature and human cost is part of the process. It creates better, but within current worldviews. Its framing is related to adaptation. This is important, but it's not the whole story of change. Shifting teaches sustainability in action. It's part of an era change from an industrialized society committed to economic growth to a life-sustaining society committed to the health of the world. We can't kid ourselves about the radical nature of this scale. It is already taking place. We've all got students around us that are doing incredible things. However, we are very far from fully realizing it. We need to do so much more. And these three elements can be mutually reinforcing if and when there's a recognition of the need and value of all three. When they are used as criteria in the teaching and learning and practice of fashion education, they can give us an idea then of where we are and where we are going. As a personal, cultural, economic and social practice, fashion is very well placed to be part of a necessary transformation of consciousness from individualization and consumption to interdependence and care. This can be played out through our habits of dress, our habits of mind, our activities, the artifacts and the relationships in attire. We've worked on a number of different pedagogic processes and practices, and I look forward really to sharing some of these with you in the conversations and to this multilogue to learn from each other. And as said at the beginning, this idea that we can all come together to be open and honest about where we are, what is happening and what we can build upon. Thank you.